I am and you are. Okay. All right. Just okay. Good. Good afternoon and welcome to Business Propel's webinar series designed to help businesses move forward. I'm Ray Welling, Editor-in-Chief of Business Propel, and I'm here today with Nancy Georges from Magnolia Solutions. Nancy, welcome. Thanks, Ray. Now, for those of you watching this webinar who aren't familiar with Business Propel, Propel works with your business to help you assess and refine your current methods to ensure your business is operating and performing at the top of its game. Start by taking a few minutes to complete one of Business Propel's assessment tools and you'll receive a comprehensive report that outlines where your business is doing well and where changes need to be made, feeding neatly, neatly into action plans to help you on the way to achieving business success, along with resources to help you take those actions. Getting on to today's discussion, the rules of business have changed and you need to learn what's important to survive in the new environment. Now, Nancy uh, Georges, who's speaking with us today, is a business strategist who helps companies navigate those changes, and she'll be sharing her knowledge with us today. Now, Nancy has more than 25 years' experience in retail, marketing, strategic planning, wholesale, product development, customer training, manufacturing, in a diverse range of retail environments and product categories in Australia, Asia, USA, and Europe. She's the director of Magnolia Solutions, which works with retailers, shopping centers, councils, chambers of commerce, manufacturers, and service providers on all aspects of the business, with a particular focus on retail, marketing, and digital integration. She's also the founder of the Innovation Pitch Fest, a global launch pad for Australian designers and small businesses. She's also a co-founder of the Social Media Women Community. Her book, Seven Powerful Ways to Boost Retail Profits in Any Economic Climate, helps retailers reconnect with the basic fundamentals of a successful retail business. So to start off our discussion today, uh, in today's social media driven society, the phrase everyone is a marketer has become popular. But Nancy, I've noticed that you say that when it comes to business, that everyone is a retailer. Why should business people of all stripes act more like retailers? Because our customers changed, right? We all and I say, I'm not saying they are retailers, but they've got to act like a retailer. So as a retailer, you have a shop, you have a business, you promote yourself, you make your product interesting, you are able to tailor things to your customer. All of that is what we all need to do as businesses. And if it wasn't for the fact that the customer has changed, we wouldn't be saying this today. So you were saying about every business, is a, you know, they've got to be a marketer. And that's purely because marketing encompasses product, place, price, communication, all of those things. Mm -hmm. So as retailers, we learn to hone into the customer, listen to the customer, and engage with the customer. And we understand our business lives and dies with the customer. And I don't think a lot of businesses in Australia really grasp that quite yet. The customer is connected, they're canny, they're savvy, they're informed, they refer, they criticise, they give opinion, they're very opinionated. But above all, they reward businesses with their money who resonate with them. Mm -hmm. And that's why businesses need to get their act together. Right. Okay. Now, speaking of retailing, um, how has the rise of online retailing and digital marketing broadened the scope of what businesses, retailers in particular, need to focus on when they're starting up and developing their business? I think this is a really interesting thing. Digital's changed game plan, the game for everybody, really. Mm. I think once upon a time, especially in Australia, you could open your shop, have a really pretty sign, be in a great location, put some great product in and out, and you did you did well. Um, you didn't even have to be a good retailer, you just had to be there because where was your customer going to shop? Mm. You know, maybe outside of your suburb, never outside of your state, unless they were on holidays, certainly not overseas unless they were travelling. Digital has opened the world up. It's made everybody accessible visible, accountable. So in digital, when we're talking about um, that connective tissue, if you like, if, if your customer doesn't like you or doesn't feel that you're meeting their needs, they're now just going to hop along, not even in their car or on their feet. They're going to digitally hop along to the next best thing. Mm. The next best thing could be overseas. And I think that's the thing that, um, you know, a lot of people, and I heard this last week about Australian customers should be supporting Australian businesses. They should be supporting Australian businesses who meet their needs. 
difference. It's mm. not just a given anymore that your customer will just shop at you or your old customer will shop with you or, or use your product or service. You know, we're talking about accountants, lawyers, mechanics, um, you know, my partner's a bricklayer and social media has changed totally um, the, the quality of his clients and, and, and his findability, if you like, outside of his geographical zone. So, you know, we're not talking about just shopkeepers or product people. Um, I definitely see this in, um, in 2004, I started my own wholesale business and I used to go to the trade fairs overseas. So, you know, we did go in a plane and went to a trade fair. Um, I came from um, corporate and then I went into family-owned business, but I set up my business in a way that nobody could tell the size of my business. And mm. I think that's the other thing too. Digital makes you um, as big as you want to appear or as small as you want to appear because of its transparency. And nobody knew what I was about except the people who knew me. Um, so I was able to act big and be big in that space. Now with digital, the transparency, and this is the other thing that the connected customer absolutely does their homework. People can see what you really are and what you really aren't in digital. And I think that's the other part too, that why marketing and, and communication is so important to business owners because you've got to get your message about who you are and what you are across in a digital space. Hmm. Okay, so, yeah, so you've mentioned um, about, you know, the sort of both angles there. So, so kind of turning that on its head, um, what kind of global opportunities have opened up for small businesses with digital marketing and e-commerce? The world's your oyster. Um, again, you can find customers anywhere in the world. Now, it could be a special interest group. Um, for example, um, a client... They make, the snug hounds make um, greyhound pyjamas. So, uh, you know, who knew <laughs> And there's a market for it. <laughs> there's a huge market for it, especially, I mean, can you imagine America right now under all that snow? Not so much in Australia, but greyhounds, because they're so skinny, they lose a lot of heat. Um, this was a greyhound owner. They did one. Then other greyhound owners at the greyhound club um, asked, you know, um, where can I get one? Then they started to make them for people. And now, of course, they ship to America um, more than anyone else, mm. um, in, in, even domestically. Now, that's a special interest. So you found, um, you found your crew, you found your tribe, and you're reaching out to them. The other way also is that you simply get onto the World Wide Web and you get active and get social and have a great website and be findable. Google, of course, have great business tools. Google... You know, I don't recommend paying hundreds of dollars a month for SEO because you might pay hundreds of dollars worth of sales, but you won't pay hundreds of dollars to do that. Um, but Google also have other great organic ways to be found, um, mm. accessible. You know, there's so much media now, which isn't just about a, a printed newspaper. It's about a really cool blog. Um, you can engage influencers. There's so many different ways to engage businesses overseas. You can build your network now. Um by joining some great forums and, and as a business owner, being in those forums and connecting with people. And again, you know, you probably find this yourself, Ray. People don't say, where are you, really? Unless, you know, yes, when you want to meet. So when you actually physically want to meet. I've had that where some people are like, oh, you're not in the States or you're not in the UK. Mm. And you're like, yeah, yeah. Right here. Um, it's interesting, though, having said that, you know, Australians, we probably travel more um, than people of other countries who've got four weeks holidays too, I suppose. But we travel a lot more, so we're able to be where we need to be. So being global, I mean, you and I are speaking, thank you for accommodating my um, my unfortunate head cold, but we're That's speaking right. to each other in real time in two different locations. And I could be in the yeah. Antarctic and you could be, you know, at the Maldives. But nobody would know because we have that connectivity. And Very I think true. this is the whole yeah. thing too that businesses really can embrace. Digital... It, Having a great website is so vital. It's you know, and I say this all the time to people, and I think people just think, oh, she, she must be on a phone all the time because this is old school thinking, right? Oh, she loves digital; she's on a phone all the time. But if you have a great website, it's it's as important as you know being well presented and well informed. And unfortunately, sometimes it's as good as your product. Mm. Um, and it works twenty four hours a day. <laughs> and it's twenty four hours a day, seven mm. days a week. It's it's global. You have an office everywhere in the world. Um, I think there's there's a couple of exceptions at the moment, um, but it won't last for long. And a good example, I had um, I needed to find a new dentist. Um, I had a couple of recommendations from people. Uh, one was 
almost literally around the corner and their website, you know, I, I fell in love with their website, right? I was like, ooh, ooh good website. Because I tick these things off in my head. Good website, great yeah. website, good information, nice blog. And they were really pushing this whole um, cosmetic, 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 cosmetic. And I was like, oh, my feeling fell out. Very simple thing. I needed to fix my feeling. Nowhere on there could I see that they had a feeling. Like, you know. Ah, right. Yeah. Done. It was all this, you know, cosmetic and obviously somebody said to them for SEO and findability and, and obviously that's where they make their money. The other one was in um, about 20 minutes away in, in what I would call an affluent suburb and I, and I was like, I'm going there for a dentist. How much is that going to cost? But then I Googled them and I could find a Google Place page which they hadn't claimed but no website. And I was like, oh, not, not even ringing them. And the person who recommended me, said, I cannot, you know, recommend highly enough and stress to you the importance of bringing these guys. He's a great dentist. Uh -huh. And, in fact, they were. And I have to tell you, when I rang up to ask them, because I thought, okay, going old school, got to ring them and ask them questions. Because, you know, unfortunately, Ray, I would like to be able to send an email or a message, an electronic message to um, these guys and get an answer, but you can't because businesses don't value email correspondence and email communication enough, but that's another point. Um but, yeah, so I rang them and I had a chat. And ultimately, I went with the non-website, the non-digital presence um, dentist. I'm so, so happy with them. They're an amazing practice. It's a really good family practice. They really know their stuff. When I met her, she was telling me, you know, we think teeth are so important. We think that, you know, we don't want to be selling stuff when people sit on the, the, our chair. We, you know, all the right things. And, and I said to her, I hate to sound like this, you know, you guys really need to work on maybe just getting a really simple site up, claiming some Google Place pages. And she said it's all in the works. They they were um, they were one of the, the older partners had left, and the newer partners, right. the younger partners, were sort of uh, taking over. Yeah. But it was in I was in the transition. But you know, for me too, that really it was just very timely because I, you know it was at the beginning of the year, and I thought it's really important to still do your homework that you still for something. Like medical, I think we can't be relying on that digital connectivity. But medical is a different thing, isn't it, compared to businesses and service providers and product mm. givers. But but it does show that, you know, it's not all about digital, but digital is that first impression. And had I not been diligent enough, I probably would have gone with the, you know, the sexy website dentist. Yeah, and, and I think one of the things that comes out of that as well is that um, – what digital has done is it's increased the power of electronic word of mouth. And so yeah. what in your case, I think what you found out was that um, the word of mouth, the traditional word of mouth was still one out. But I, I, what I've found is that um, if companies can harness the digital side and start um, getting word of mouth working online, that's when you become really successful. Yeah, And you know, to your point about websites being 24-7, that it means that I don't, you know, this whole about us on the homepage, people don't want about us. I don't want to be told that you've got 27,000 letters after your name and that you've been, you know, doing this for X number of years. I want examples, you know, where, um, you mentioned that I, you know, I've got Innovation Pictures, Social Media Women. I love to put that information about, here's my project, see my, see my work, read my blog. Um, and I think that's the other thing too. Your website needs to be that communicator with people when they visit the website that you can't be when they visit. It's not a static mm. brochure. Too many websites, especially for professionals, corporates, service providers, excuse me, <coughs> sorry, are very brochure and they need to not be brochure mm, mm, Yep, I agree. Okay, so you've talked a lot about opportunities. Um, so with these global opportunities, I suppose there's a lots of new things you can do. Um, what are the most common mistakes that business people make when they're, you know, either starting up a new business or taking their existing business in a new direction? Sorry, Ray. That's okay. <laughs> My throat, me. <laughs> uh, so many mistakes. So many mistakes. The biggest one is not doing your homework. The biggest one is not knowing who mm. you're talking to. Um, the biggest one is not knowing what market, what your marketplace is, what your competitors are doing. They're the things that I see, uh, um, you know, and yes, have, not having a website and not addressing digital is on that list of top 10. But I think if your business is sound enough and or, or makes sense enough 
and you are providing a service that nobody else is doing or you're filling a gap or you're meeting a new need. So, for, you know, at the moment, the whole thing with retail is bespoke. People want to be able to put their initials on or their name on or create their flavor or, you know, this whole sort of personalization. So if you're coming up with um, a leather goods, you know, handbag range or bullet range or whatever, and you're not addressing, okay, how do I add personalization into that because this is an emerging thing, then that's to your detriment because you don't understand the marketplace that you're going into. So your customer's going to go, here's a new business, but they haven't done the fundamentals. When they, This is what the other guys are doing. So you're always going to be compared to what is existing, especially when you're new. If you are changing how your business is, then people want to see that you're savvier and have better tools. I think not knowing – I think there's, there's – you know, we've seen so many great tech products or techie solutions to things that have a great solution, but they haven't executed it properly or they haven't um, given customers the tools to be able to use it properly. And that will fall down. It's a great product. It's a great need, but they haven't communicated across. They haven't shown people how to use it in their own home. Those sort of things will then naturally fail as well. So even if you have done your homework and you can create a great product, if it isn't in a way that somebody can consume it easily and readily, then you have a big issue. So there's all different ways – so a, a, a great, you know, this PC Mac war is a great example, I think, because, you know, it's taking PC was first, Mac existed, sort of went away, came back with a force because they totally understood their customers. Macs were built intuitively. You didn't have to know how to do computer speak to turn it on and get it all connected. Mm. Your devices talk to each other organically. So people were like, you know what, it is double the price, but I don't have to do anything. It doesn't crash. I don't have to put it in. Microsoft have now come up with Surface Pro. So Surface Pro and solutions and solutions to things that the iPad doesn't have. And it's a really, really great hook. It's a great product. I'm, I'm happily surprised to say, you know, you look at it and you think, mm. great work, Microsoft. So definitely, and yes, we're talking about two huge um, companies, global businesses. But even global businesses need to keep themselves up to date. Um, and understand, like, you know, Samsung with their phones that, blow up mid-air. You know, these are real problems that happen to huge companies who do do their due diligence. So if you're a small firm that doesn't do their due diligence, doesn't know what the mistakes could be, doesn't engage the customer, doesn't make your business customer-centric, you will fail. And I suppose that's the biggest thing about not doing your homework, not knowing your market, not knowing your competition, is that you, if you don't do that, it means that you don't put that customer first. And I think if you're starting a business in this day and age, you have to love customer service. You have to love when the clients mm. call. You have to want to passionately answer their questions and solve their problems. Because if you don't have that drive, it will show and you'll get weary and things won't work. And I think they're the biggest things that really sort of hinder it. I think another thing, and this is maybe specifically for Australian businesses is you can't be complacent and you can't think something will go away you and I were just talking about somebody who said to us you know that social media is fat. it's a fad it'll go away I don't need to think about it mm. very just thinking we we need to keep informed up to date we need to understand our competitors are anywhere not just in our suburb in the world and I think if we don't keep ourselves informed and learning that's going to be very detrimental and we're seeing that a lot in Australia at the moment you know we don't have a manufacturing industry anymore so we've got a manufacturer sure to lower prices they say yet our, our products are still the most expensive prices I think pricing in Australia is a huge issue mm, I think it's mm. just, it's just to understand you need to be 20 to 25 percent less you need to stop going on sale all the time because what does sales say to your customer I got the price wrong well, I just, I need some money. I'm going to put some stuff on sale, come into my shop. So the customer is now very clever. They understand all these. You know, have you, you know that show, Check Out on Channel 2? Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, I watch I that. love that show. I watch that show all the time and I think clever because it's informing the customer in a way that the customer can digest and it makes them more informed. So I think if you're not going to understand that, if you're not going to want to understand digital and learn digital and get your platforms right or go to somebody who can help you, um, we're talking about I, I have a business meeting that happens every month for small businesses because I understand people don't have infinite money. As a consultant, it's not my job to bleed somebody dry for six months and then go see you later. Mm. Um, but you need to tap into things in digestible little ways. And so I changed my offering for that purpose. Did I start that off with that? No, because 
I thought, you know, I would do a lot of one-on-one and then I realised, you know what, there's customers that can't do that, so what can I offer? Because I still wanted to connect with SMEs. So, you know, there's places you can go to tap into people with info. You can, Dr. Google's an amazing tool. Mm, mm. My partner and I say this all the time. We see, like, not one day goes by where we don't say Google it. Yeah. Like to us, it's like it's a Google race, right? Whenever we say, let's Google it, it's the race to see who can use the keywords first. So we, we're talking about very connected people in this world. And I think if you don't understand that, you will always be learning. You will always be um, adapting and changing yourself and your business. Mm-hmm. Moving forward from onward, you, you're in a lot of trouble. Right. Okay. So you talk about the importance of, you know, doing your homework and all that. Let's take it right back to the beginning. If you're starting up a business or if you're going into a new direction with your business, um, what, how, like, what, why do you really need to do have a business plan? Why is that important? I think, you know, a plan gives you direction. So the same way that if you don't know how to cook, and you say, I'm going to make my birthday cake. I'm going to make my mum's birthday cake. More important than your own, right? Mm. Because you're happy to eat the dough out of the book for yourself. But my mum, she's important. I want to make a beautiful cake. I look for a recipe. The recipe gives me what I need, how to mix it, how long to cook it for, and out it comes. I follow the recipe. Might be some technique that you need in between. But fundamentally, I'm going to end up with a cake that is edible. Now, if somebody came and gave me a list of ingredients and went, here's your eggs, your flowers, your sugar, in a, in a packet, you know, in your full one kilo packs, good luck. <laughs> it will not turn into a cake. Could be a pancake, will not be an edible cake. And I think this is the thing, this is why we need plans. This is why um, we take our car to the mechanic because he's the guy that knows his stuff. He's done his homework. He knows what goes into our car, what it should look like, how he should give it back to me. And a business plan really helps you for no other reason. It helps you think about your business. It gives you the why for your business. Mm. And if you don't know the why, then you're not going to know the who and the what. So if you know why you're starting a business and then you develop a plan that goes with that, then you simply have to follow the plan. And I think this is the other thing. And, and I mean, God, we've all done this, haven't we? Very really. We've started something and just gone with it. And, you know, or you, or my plan, no, no, in real life, you know, my real life hasn't happened. But sometimes mm. you just mm. simply need to follow the recipe. You need to go, let me just take it to point 10 and then let me assess and go from there. And I think this is the other thing too about um, definitely retail, not so much business. But in retail in Australia, it's been a historical thing. Um, you had some retrenchment money. Good old days in the 80s, pilots gave their wives $250,000 because they wanted to write off on their tax at done a shop. <laughs> There wasn't a lot of skill and knowledge and homework. And I think, you know, definitely, and I say this having gone to university and done a marketing degree in the early days of marketing, it what it does is give you structure. And that whole thing about writing a plan gives you structure. It helps you work out where to find the information. And then you can go from there. And I think building a plan is so, so important. Sticking to it is important. Now, if you find, oh, my God, that, that plan's so out of it, it's wrong, well, then you sit down and write a new plan. You don't make it up as you go along. And I think this is the thing. It's our recipe to success for our business. Right. Great. Okay. So you've got your plan. You've uh, got things started up. Now, once, uh, you know, once you're getting going and you uh, have a few questions and all that sort of thing, um, how important is it for uh, small businesses to be able to meet with and share with other small businesses to kind of, you know, talk over your challenges, that sort of thing. Vital. Um, it's so important to have a network of people. Um, I, for a great example, so we, I, I was a wholesaler, as I mentioned to you, and, and I quickly identified that wholesale was an outdated model and that I should have, what I should have done is been a great retailer who then sold to some great retailers like I was. Not be a wholesaler at 35% margin and be trying to hold up, prop up my clients, my, my retailers' businesses because I knew more than they did. So I did change from, from when I started to use social media for my wholesale business. I had a lot of people say, could you do that Facebook thing for me? Because it was Facebook then. And um, and I'd, I'd go into their businesses and, and I'd go, well, we can't put this on Facebook. We need to get these things fixed to put on Facebook. At the same time, I started to use Twitter. So 2009 when Twitter was new, um, relatively 2008, 2009, I started to attend tweet-ups in 
2008 in Sydney. Uh -huh. So I had, um, with the Tusharati, as I used to call mm. them, so we used to meet, and it was a really great place to meet these people in real life who, uh, some of them I didn't follow on Twitter and then I ended up subsequently following, or some people that you followed on Twitter that you meet in real life. To me, it's still so much more important to meet in real life. Um, you can keep that connectivity digitally but still have that contact in your life. But they became my advisory board, Ray, and this is the thing that small business owners don't really have often. They might go to networking events, but they don't know how to network properly because we're Australian, right? We like to stand in the corner a little bit. We're not we're not American. Rah, rah, look at me. This is what I do. Got to love them. We need to act more American sometimes. Um, but very much in those in that way of, they were my go-to people and still are my go-to people. You know, if I want to ask questions, I've got my, my advisory board of people, not just to go and network with and stand up and go, hi, I'm Nancy. It's not AA, you know. I'm Nancy, I have this and I do this and hi, Nancy. Um, it is about, and I think, you know, to network to learn is so much more important than networking for sales mm. because sales will come once you're learnt and connected properly. Um, yeah. I, I mentioned to you again, business crew, that's what we do. My biggest aim, of course, is to help these businesses that come along every month with knowledge. But the other part is to really build their own advisory board, to look at these people around the table and say, you, you are my crew, you're my tribe, I've got your back, you've got my back, let's get connected. That's naturally how I act in life and in business. And I recognize that a lot of people don't act like that in life and in business. So if you really um, connect to learn and have that, because once you do have your plan, you need a lot of support. What software do I need? What hardware do I need? How do I freight my things around? What courier service do you use? How do you employ people? How do you hire people, fire people? Like all the things that come with having a business. How do I get my professional skills um, up there? How do I write a blog? How do I, um, you know, I, I want to go to a chamber meeting. And I think this is, and I said this um, last week again, you know, when I started um, in the business world in the 80s, late 80s, with Grace Brothers Apartment Store, every business in your suburb was part of the chamber. Every business. Mm. Like from the deli to the accountant. And that changed. I think the last 20 years, definitely people moved away from that. And now people are coming back into associations like the chambers, you know, for no other reason that you go back, you know, if you are in a, a, a physical location and you're in a shopping area or in a, a suburb or in a local area, you should be getting all your neighbours along to chamber meetings. You should be able to communicate. You should be networking with each other, working out how you can build your business together because you're physically together. You might not be intellectually or mentally together, but you are physically together, which is a great mm. reason. Or if you have a business that is, that, you know, you're connected on, on some sort of other reason. It could be that you're part of Business Crew Advisory Board. I always find collaboration between people who get together so much easier because you find when you meet and talk, you find these great commonalities. And, I, you know, probably my thing too because I am a bit of a connector. I love to put people together and go, you guys should do this because, you know, as you know, when you look at something from the outside, it's so much easier than when from being inside it all the time. And so sometimes you can give people perspective and say, you know, you guys should think about doing this or, you know, a big one, and, and this always works, is if you're an online store and you know someone with a physical space, connect with them and make them your click and collect location for your website. It doesn't have to be an Australia post. It could be the hairdresser down the road. And that hairdresser is going to get people who buy stuff from your website picking up in her salon that might never have been to her salon or a beautician or a pet store or, you know, these are all things that come together when people meet mm. because yet you trust them. You trust them and you, you, you check them out and you make sure they're reputable. You don't have to like somebody to connect with them and be commercially um, in business with them. It's always a bonus. But the biggest thing is trust. If I can trust you with my business, then I can do business with you. Mm. Right. Okay. Well, look, that's great. I think we might, uh, we might wrap it up there. I'd like to thank you very much for sharing your insights with us, Nancy. Thank you, Ray. Thanks for your time. And really, I, I'm not saying this for any other reason. Business Propel I, has has solved – I haven't even tapped into it and it's solved already top 10 problems for me to be able to assess my clients' businesses. And Business Propel is a tool – this is this is not a paid ad, guys. Um, but Business Propel will give you a structure and a starting point that you would normally pay thousands of dollars to an expert to give you. So if these tools become available – um, and, you know, freemium models are always great. Try it for free. If you like it, buy it. But try it. Press every button on a screen. 
press every answer every question in the box because it won't hurt you, it will only help you. Great. Well, there you go. I don't need to do my uh, my outro now, so thanks for that. Now, if you want to find out more about Nancy, just Google her Nancy Georges at Magnolia Solutions. You can find out more about her work. And if you want to learn more about Propel, you can check us out, as, uh, as Nancy said, at businesspropel.com.au. Or if you've got any questions, drop us a line at customerservice at businesspropel.com.au. In the meantime, thanks very much for your time, and best of luck with your work. Okay, great. Now, I just, I didn't ask the last question because we nearly ran out of power on the computer and we just made it. 2%. <laughs> <laughs>